press about. Okay. Come to stand in the front of your mat. So wherever the front of your mat is. Hands come to the heart. And I remember years ago, during the whole practice, you want to hold the root lock. The, the pelvic floor muscles lifting up. But if you just think of the stomach, the pelvic floor is sorted. So if you, so just before we go, so just to, to inspire you, you can like do, do a lift like that. No stomach working, okay? I can do it with my legs. Now, I'm going to just engage the stomach like this. Like there's so much more energy if we start lifting from the stomach. Okay, and we're going to do that on every single pose. You can like, you can go, ah, uh, or you can, ooh, lift the stomach, making space. And it really helps, yeah, lifting the stomach. Okay, hands to your heart. Big toes together, thighs back, pelvis forward. Lift pelvic floor. Oh, yes, the story was that when I started teaching Ashtanga, it was so difficult to think that for an hour and a half or an hour that you're going to be focused on lifting the pelvic floor. And it was like, at the end of the class, I would go, oh my God, I completely forgot about lifting the pelvic floor. And after years of practice, it just naturally is there. So let's just experience, experiment, and see. Stay lifted in the stomach. So if I keep telling you to lift the stomach, it will happen. Close your eyes for a moment. Soften into your breathing. Soften the shoulders, relax the neck. And we'll skip the mantra and just start with three arms tonight. Take a deep inhale, chant with me if you like. slightly and it counts when I give the counting it's to remind you to breathe standing in front take a deep inhale reach your arms up exhale reach down arms forward or side place the hands to the floor inhale lifting onto your tippy fingers and lifting the tummy and extending the spine bend the knees or not press hands to the floor and step or jump back first one's always nice to step it back the first jump back might be, and bend the elbows, the first jump back might be um, jumping already, jumping back to the hands. Exhale, down and facing down. Just find this quite a rude awakening to your arms to take your whole body weight first shot. And we inhale, lift the belly. Exhale, drop the head through, looking at your navel. And we hold, breathe. One, two, Three, four, deep breaths, five. Inhale and bend your knees, reach spine forward, step or jump to the hands, lift belly, flow down. Inhale, lift the belly and reach the arms up, get the pelvis back to neutral. Reach, look up at the thumbs, exhale, hands back down to heart or to the thighs. Inhale, echo. Dvi, exhale to the floor. Trini, inhale, looking up or reaching out. Push your hands into the floor and chatvari. Four, bend your elbows. Inhale, punch up. And exhale, shut into downward facing dog. Lift the tummy and we hold. Inhale, exhale. One, two, I want you to feel on this, does it, where's your head in relation to your shoulders? Can you lift the tummy more 
more, stretch your shoulders more, and take your head to look more into your navel, more towards your pelvis. Can you see your pelvis? Step or jump to the hands. On the next inhalation, stretch out. Exhale, float down. On the inhalation, reaching up, pelvis neutral, eyes up to the thumbs, lengthen, exhale, hands back down. So I'm going to take you through a different way of getting into down dog, just to feel how the neck, how the lift in the belly actually happens in down dog. Inhale, echo, dvi, exhale, touch the floor. Inhale, trini, reaching out, root into the hands, chapati into your push-up position, stop there, nice glutes. Inhale, pancha. Exhale, down the thing. Oh, I'm live, live. Okay, come to plank. So just hold plank. Now, drop your head, lift the belly, drop your head, and then curl into your down dog. So your head almost feels like it's going first. And just feel that position. If your feet are too far away, just walk them in. And we breathe in and out. One, two, three, Four and five. Ashtao is jumping forward, lift and reach. Nava, inhale, lengthen and fold into the legs. Reaching up. Samasatihi, hands back down. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, flow down. Inhale, extend, root the hands. So you're on your tippy fingers maybe first, and then bend and root, press down, and then step or jump back to plank, bend elbows, inhale, lift, thighs up, off the floor, and roll, exhale, and we breathe in, lift the belly, breathe out, keep the head in, one, two, and if you can't feel a nice shoulder stretch, what you could do in your down dog, is lift on your toes and really bend deep. Put your thighs, put your chest on your thighs and feel the shoulders. And then keep lifting in the tummy as you try and stretch the thighs back again. Four, five. Lift the tummy, step or jump towards the hands. Extend, exhale, flow down. Inhale, press on the feet, reach up. Glutes. Help your pelvis to come straight. Exhale, hands down. Now, I want to also, I wanted to make a little video to explain this because often people think in yoga, get the hamstrings long. That can actually put too much pressure on the hamstrings constantly because this is going to be a forward folding class. So it's, but we forget that in actual fact, you get an inner rotation, so you're hugging, rooting the big toes, but then you also have the outer rotation that comes from the glute. So I root down the two big toes, then I squeeze. Now that's where you really want to do your forward fold or any. So if I'm doing Paschvatanasana, I'm not going to go extend and, and really, because that skews the hips. So try and think of outer rotation. You've got the big toes down, so that's the inner rotation. Lift the tummy in the outer rotation, then go down. And you'll see a bit of a difference there. It doesn't mean to say I have to be like this, but I'm holding the glutes there and then extending out. And I promise you, in the seated forward face, try it everywhere, okay? So, give it a try. Just last one salute. Again, already get the glutes. Inhale. And lift. Now lift up and over and feel that there's no super extension there. It's a lift in the tummy and then a lengthening of the spine. Inhale onto your hands, push down, step or jump back, bring elbows, really get the glutes, lift up into the up dog, exhale into the downward facing dog, and lift belly, breathing in, breathing out, one, two, three, drishti to the navel, look at the navel, four, and five, step up 
to the hands. Extend the heart and exhale, throw it down. Nava, inhale. Find the thumb, neutral again, and reach up, look at the thumbs, exhale. Now, B, bend the knees. So even here, in a squat, you want a bit of a hug around in the glutes. Then reach and lift the belly. The belly helps to extend the spine. Lower down, relax the head, inhale. And everything's the same here. Bend the elbows back to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. The left foot swivels, can bring it in a little bit if you like. Right foot comes forward between your hands and you're in warrior one. Stretch up, look at the thumbs, hold one, deep, take a nice seat into your right hip. Two. Oh, what are we staying there for? Exhale, come down, step back, and bend elbows. Inhale, lift the thighs, exhale, down, down. Right leg forward and swivel, the right leg swivel, sorry, left leg forward, press down, root, lift the belly, and open your hip, look up at the thumbs. One, oh, sorry, exhale, still exhaling, bend the elbows, inhale, lift, exhale, down, down. Breathe in, breathe out, one, two, keep lifting the belly. And notice the lift in the belly goes nicely with the rotation of the glutes. So if you keep lifting, there's not so much tension on the hamstrings. Four, five, step or jump to the hands, root, extend out, exhale, lift the belly, flow down, bend the knees, Back to Utkatasana, inner rotation plus an outer rotation, lift the belly, reach out, exhale, back. Just one more of those. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, step or jump back. Chaturanga. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down, down. Right leg forward. Remember your modification, you can always put the knees on the floor in that. Then the elbows coming down, so there you could put knees and support the bend a little bit. Lift, exhale. Left leg forward, right leg swiveling, inhale. Stretch up to the sky, exhale. Slip back, bend elbows, inhale, exhale. Breathing in, breathe out. Thighs back, stretch arms, hold one, two. Check that you're active in your legs, inner rotation into the big toe. So lift your toes if you can off the floor and feel how the big toe bound roots down and then rotate into your glutes to the outside of your hips. Four, lift belly, five. Now when you jump, think of your belly lifting, bend the knees, Root into your hands, jumping forward, low down, inhale, bending the knees first, and into Utkatasana, exhale, back down. Parangustasana, take your feet hip-width apart, you can jump or step, inhale, now this is where you really want to say, instead of going, oh yeah, hamstring stretch, here we come, lift the tummy, hug it around, and then try and extend it out, holding the tummy. Inhale, stretch up tall, exhale, there we go. So you hike and you lengthen simultaneously and grab hold of your two big toes with the index and middle finger around the big toe and the thumb holding the index or middle finger and flow down, head goes right down. Holding two, deep breath in and out, lifting the belly, three, four, and five. Inhale, keep holding on the toes as you lengthen out. Lift the tummy, take your hands or the tips of your fingers underneath your feet. Lengthen out again, lift the thighs, lift your kneecaps, exhale, flow down, broaden your back, pull the shoulders back to your waist, and breathe, three, 
Well, and if you find too much tension on the back of your knees, slight micro bend or even a big bend is most welcome. Four. Five. Inhale, extend. Exhale, release your hands onto your hips. Inhale, press down to come stand. And note that you're standing, lifting the tummy, using your glutes. Hands to heart and step to the side. So now you're sideways. If you want to change your mat, you can. Right foot to the right, otherwise keep following my voice. Exhale, reach out. If you can, you grab the big toe. Otherwise, just go as far as you can. Keep revolving that left side of your ribcage up. If your neck doesn't, isn't happy with looking at your left hand, then don't. Lift the tummy, root onto the outside of your feet as well, so outer rotation in the hips, and reopen out the ribcage. Hand directly to the sky. Four, five, press onto the feet, inhale, come up. Turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out. Root the outside of your feet, root through both feet equally, and exhale. Grab for the left big toe or left ankle and shin, reach out. Lengthen the spine, strong in the legs, micro bend if necessary. Two, keep revolving the right side of your ribs. Four, five, press down, inhale, come up. Twisting triangle, turn all the way to the right with your heels in line with each other. Left arm comes forward. So option one, bend the front leg if you need to and put the hand on the shin more. Otherwise, big toe side, ultimately onto the little toe side. Again, lifting tummy and reaching. Place the hand, press down. Revolve your ribs, but don't revolve. Don't drop the left hip. Lift in the belly. Two. Three. Four. And five, press down, lift the belly, inhale, come up, the arm can go long way or short way, and push back into the little toe side. Inhale, hug into the center, hug, and then go forward, and that's what I'm trying to say about the, ham, the hamstrings. Don't have to fight them into this extreme length. Don't worry, the stanger will lengthen them beautifully. Two. Three, if you can, get pressure down your right arm to feel that twist and extension through the left arm. Four, and five, press down, inhale to come up, and step to the front. <sighs> okay, step to the right, but wider than before. Right foot to the right for Pashvakonasana. Bend and sit nice and deep into this position. If you can get this deep, then the touching the hand on the floor is not that difficult. But your option could be elbow on the knee or hand on the ankle. Reach, go nice and deep. Right hand on the little toe side. Left arm up to the skirting. And if you can, look up. So you really want to lift the tummy and revolve around so that the head doesn't take strain to look up at the hand. So if it does, don't look for now. Breathe. Three. Four, five, make sure you've got the strength of your legs pressed down to come up, turn all the way to the left, root, lift your right inner thigh and sink deep into the left sit bone, lift tummy, reach and lengthen right arm over, look up at the palm, hold one, breathe, lift belly, two, Three, four, five. Find the feet, press down, inhale, come up. And let's go to the twisting one. Now, if you need to, this is the most advanced standing pose that there is in the sequence. Um, so if you want to drop the knee or lift the heel, you can. Otherwise, you keep it like warrior one and you just bend as Take the elbow over as far as you can. Ultimately, you want to put it on the floor, but that's quite a twist. So do any variation of the back leg. Left arm comes up. And if you make a prayer position, 
Press the palms together. Yeah, in the twist. Left elbow past the right knee. And hold one, two, three. And still rooting through your left foot as well. Four, five. Inhale, press down to come back up. You can circle the arms big or small. Come over to the other side. Lift your right inner thigh. Either way, even if it is up, then take the right elbow around the left knee and work your way. The left hand will eventually touch down on your left little toe side. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale to come up. And we're going to skip the Prasarita Padutanasana positions. Come to standing in the front of your mat. Take your hands. If you want to do a variation on this one, hands can go to the floor. Otherwise, you can interlock and do that. If this is not going to work, put the hands in prayer, reverse prayer. Okay, so you got the right foot stepping back. Turn all the way away from me. Swivel the left foot onto the floor. Lift the tummy. Now, this is really where you want to hug the glutes. Lift the tummy. Root through your feet, especially the big toes, and then elongate, lengthen. You want to lift the tummy and then soften. So eventually, as you get more supple, that line goes longer and longer and longer. So chin to the shin eventually. Hold one, two. So if chin's going to shin eventually, then eyes are going to the big toe. But don't force that. So if you feel the lift in the belly and then you soften the upper body, kind of will start to go in that direction. Inhale, press on the feet, come up. And turn all the way, keeping the hands in the reverse prayer. Heels in line with each other. Root down on the, using your right thigh and right glute. Inhale, and strong into the left leg. Lift the tummy, elongate. Hold one, two, three, four, Still breathing and lifting the bandha. Five. Inhale, coming up, release the hands and step to the front. Okay, Parangustasana. We're going to vote for this one now, it's already voted. We're going to do this not standing, we'll do it just now lying on your back. So let's go to the next uh, one. Take your right leg, I'll be your mirror. Take your right leg. And you want to close this knee as much as possible. For the anatomy of your knee. Pull the heel towards your hip and then hold and come into half lotus. If that doesn't work for you, you can just stand in tree balance. Okay, now I've got the foot with my left hand. Take the right arm around and bind. If you can, you get this hand to go down to the toe and bind the toe. But don't stress. Okay, so if that's where you are, that's great. If you want to, if you feel quite a lot of tension on the bottom leg, then bend it a little bit. Lift the tummy and either whichever arm is free, take it down to the floor if you want. Otherwise, stay standing. Take both hands if you want to and try for the bind if you like there and then flow it down towards your left leg. Put the left hand, if you can, next to the left little toe and you fold into this pose. Three. Now don't rush to come up. Four. Five. Then first, inhale, extend. Exhale, you hold. But you might want to bend your knee. When you're ready, inhale, come stand. See if you can stay standing whatever position you were. And release. Other side. Bend the knee nice and close in. Take the foot to the opposite hip and be gentle. Take the left arm around, maybe just grab your wrist, maybe it gets the foot. And reach down with your, ultimately will be your right hand, but if it's the left hand coming down to the floor, that's fine. Inhale, extend, exhale, flow down. Bend the knee if you want to. I really enjoy bending the knee because it gets me better into the side glute. 
that's in the lotus position. Otherwise, I'm compensating and leaning on the standing leg. You really want to lift the belly on this one. Get on, don't rush. Inhale, extend. Exhale, hold. Inhale, ready to come up. Lengthen. Exhale. On the inhalation, come up. Exhale, release. Hands to heart. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, flow down. Inhale, extend. Exhale, step or jump back. Chaturanga. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down dog. Let's do the warriors. So we skipped out Utkatasana. Now to warrior one, right leg comes forward. Swivel the back foot. Send nice and deep into your pose. Reach your arms up. Look at the thumbs. Hold one, two, three, four, beautiful, five. Rotate, stay straight in the right leg, look up at the hands all the time, swivel and sit down into your left hip. Lift the tummy, hold, breathe, two, three, four. Now, as you change, don't bend, don't straighten the left knee, just come to warrior two, open the hip, look over the left shoulder, one, two, three, four, five. Change, keep lifting the belly, root through the feet, and sit deep to the right, one, two, Follow the breathing, three, steady, calm breath, four, and five. We're going to play a little bit with handstands, so you can bring your hands down. Now, you've got a few options here. Yeah? We did in the primal flow class, we were sitting like little apes, and we had to jump onto the hand switching the legs. So it's kind of the similar, okay? But so from your down dog position, you can just move this foot a little bit back. Relax your head, root your foot now, lift the tummy and switch your legs. So you don't even have to come very high. You can even see if you can switch your legs quite low. Okay, but if you're happy with that, switch your legs a little higher. So moving your weight onto your hands, lifting the belly, switching the legs in the air, switching the legs in the air. And the secret is to really get where your hands are touching the floor and let them meet the earth. Good. Your tummy must stay nice and strong and lifted. Okay, if you've played enough, when you're ready, you can come to Chaturanga. Inhale. Up dog. Exhale. Down the facing dog. Now the vinyasas could be jumping, stepping, walking, whatever you like. Commonly done is bending, jumping, then landing and straightening the legs. Okay. Sitting in Dandasana, hands are next to your hips. All three bundles, so drop your chin, soften the shoulders, and get the three bundles in the front engaged. Breathe one, a giant breath. Two. Still rooted, you have to root through the base and then feel the pelvis, pelvic muscles lifting up, then the belly, then the chest. Four. And five. Reach forward for the two big toes. You might not get to the two big toes, then you can grab the ankles. But if you can, get the two big toes, index and middle finger with a thumb. Lift and extend. Exhale, lower down. Hold. One. Two. Three. Four. Keep deep breathing. Five. Lift the belly and extend out. We're going to do two. So your option is to hold the feet, 
to put the palms over the feet, or the final one is to bind on the other side of your feet. So take a choice, inhale, or maybe it's not a choice, you just stay where you are, and extend, soften the shoulders, lengthen, lift the belly, and lengthen. So again, you're going to eventually get the head higher, but that happens quite organically. So you're hugging in, you get got your glutes, you're pulling your body forward. So you can even from the position you've chosen, do another inhalation and hug the pelvis, hug the base and stretch. Then go further down. And you'll notice that the deeper you go, the more the chest goes and the head doesn't. But initially the head might go, then just let it go. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, extend out, lifting the tummy. Exhale, release. Into the vinyasa. Now the most common one, of course you can lift up and jump back. Or you could, you can't get your feet there. The most common one that people do is put the feet in, place the hands front, step here yeah, or jump, back to plank, bend the elbows, inhale, lift. Exhale, down and flatten down. And again, we jump to land on the buttocks. So you bend your knees, land on your bum, and stretch your legs forward. Or bend your knees, don't land on your bum, bring your legs forward, and then sit up. Okay. Next one, Purvuchanasana. Place your hands behind you, open your chest, lift the tummy. Inhale, and exhale. Bring, try and work the two big toes down on the floor. And press down through the hands. Breathe one, two. Keep the thighs rolling in and keep the bum going up and the chest up higher. Four and five. Exhaling down. Cross your ankles and do your variation, your version of the jump back. Inhale, exhale, jump back. Bend elbows. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down and face and down. And jump to seated. <sighs> Can't skip out my favorite pose. So I'll be your mirror again. Take your right leg. You're going to close the knee. Take the foot onto the opposite hip. These are such nice preparations to get your full notice. See if you can rotate the sole of the foot up. And then, if there's any discomfort in the knee, don't force it further down. Lift it up. And when you're ready, if you can bind, take your right arm around. Otherwise, just go forward. Inhale, lift. Lift the belly. Exhale. Forward. Three, one. Two. Three. Four. Slow the breathing. Five. Inhale, extend. Exhale, release. And we go to vinyasa. Cross the ankles in the front. Take a take up or put the feet on the floor and jump back. Bend elbows. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down and face and down. And we're ready for the other side. Step and jump to the floor. And take the left leg this time. Close the knee. The foot to the opposite hip. We're going to take the sole of the foot up and grab with the left hand if possible. Otherwise, don't stress. Take that hand forward. Inhale, exhale. Hold one, two, three, four, and Inhale, extend, exhale, release. Cross the ankles in front and we do another vinyasa. Take up, inhale, exhale, jumping back. Bend elbows, inhale. There you want to really on the upward facing dog, feel the hips open, exhale, down facing dog. And jump to seated. And it's Triang Mukha Eka Para Pashimottanasana. Whatever, okay. Bring the knee in and it sits on the side. So some people do have a flexed foot and otherwise sole of the foot up to the sky. If you find
find you're falling all over to that to the left side with your left hand this is my favorite adjustment i push i sink back into the hips then lift and extend out so i'm keeping the left hand there just for security and then see what muscles do you need to get to stay sitting and not falling onto your side so if you need to keep the hand two and it really is just some flexibility somewhere four nice long deep breaths five you could jump back from ya or you could just come around cross your ankles in the front and do the same as before otherwise jump back and just take the legs back bend elbows inhale open the hips exhale downward facing dog and jump through to seated this time the left leg bends onto the side foot left foot by the left buttocks again you can support on your right hand or if you know this one's strong enough and lifting up in the hips reach forward grab the foot or the ankle or bind on the other side of your foot and breathe one two three a nice giant breath four and five either the vinyasa from this position or undo your legs and cross them in front of you inhale lift exhale jump back Bend, inhale, up dog, exhale, down facing dog, and jump back to seated. Uh, let's not skip Marutya uh, Janusishasana. Take your right leg, place the heel on the inside of your right leg. So my hips are quite open, not just sitting straight. I'm opening the foot, opening the knee if that's possible. Lift the tummy. In the beginning, you might find, oh, I'm going in that direction. Then put your left hand out and really try and twist, but lengthen and twist. Okay, so lift the tummy. You reach forward for the front foot. Extend one, two. And this is where you can really feel what I mean with hug the base, lift the belly, and then project yourself into the forward line instead of thinking, oh, I have to arch my lower back. So you're lifting the tummy in, lifting your hips and opening the lower back instead of actually tilting it. You're lifting and then pulling long. And five. Inhale, extend. Exhale, release. You're loving the vinyasas, hey, no stop. If you need to rest, five Ujjayi breaths. Otherwise, come back for your vinyasa, cross the ankles, lift, jumping back, bend elbows, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, and step and jump for the other side, Janusishasana. Now it's the right leg, her left leg, that comes on the outside. Take the arms if you want to help support for now, otherwise reach forward. Lift tummy, soften shoulders, breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, extend, exhale, relax. Before you do vinyasa, you can breathe. I just want to show you, share something with you from my own experience. So to know if my torso is in the right place in the, in the forward fold or in any position. Firstly, I check if my ribs are popping, then I know, okay, this is crunching. So when I'm in my forward fold and I can feel my chest on my leg in, instead of my rib cage on my leg, yeah, that's a better position. So you lift it and you extend it. So it's, yeah, not in the ribs out. Second thing, what was this? Mm -hmm. So my ribs are down, uh, then the shoulder blades. So this goes with kind of a distension of the rib cage that happens, 
Or you've got a kyphosis, which is quite common, even in, in the people with good posture, that the shoulders roll a little bit forward like that. So now you're in the stretch and you're going all forward, but you're not elongating. So you try to elongate, and this is what I try to elongate through the rib cage. But you want to pull the shoulder blades back. So it's, it's quite nice, it's quite simple to head is equal, neutral, and instead of having your shoulders feel, yeah, think of your shoulder blades like these two beautiful um, fans, and they're pulling down, and the lowest point is pulling down on your back but your ribs stay in. Okay, just watch that for naughty people like me. Ribs stay in and the shoulder blades go back. So first, if you bring your knees to your chest, you'll notice your ribs do naturally go down. You actually can't do it trying to, and that's why, I don't know why this idea of lifting the lower back has come to some yoga teachers. It's, you want to hug the tummy, but yes, you don't want to be so slouched. You want to hug and then grow. So the lower back doesn't push up, it just stays and it lengthens, you grow through the lats. Then, shoulder blades on your back. So actually, you're sitting with quite a relaxed arm position. You're not like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do this jump back. It's open. Quite relaxed, place your hands next to you, and then, of course, for those who are putting your feet down and going forward, otherwise, try it there, and just even if you get your take up, lift. Don't worry, we'll have a nice opportunity for that. So if you can, inhale, jump it back, and your shoulders, so even if you're plank, Feel your plank again. You want to re-get it, lift the chest, make the ribs go down, make your stomach go up, and then roll your shoulder blades on your back and still push down through your arms and then feel, hey, wait a minute, that's really stable. So if you want to change arms, you'll feel stability through the shoulder blades by pulling the two shoulder blades back and pressing down. Good, then try your chaturanga from there. Bend elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And even here, shoulders are long and stretched out, but you can wrap them outwards. And that also helps the lowest point, it's the serratus anterior that wraps around into the back. Then, step or jump, two seated. Okay. I won't kill you with Navasanas because I want to do Marichyasana, place the right foot next to your thigh, but make space. So it's not sitting next to it, it's sitting open. Lift the tummy, reach, lengthen your right arm forward, bind behind your back, lift the belly, inhale, extend, exhale, stretch over the left leg. Now this is where it's so beautiful, we can feel, when we're trying to just get forward, we tend to go, okay, I'll do whatever it takes, and kind of like push the lower back, forward, but hug in, so as you're staying in the pose, hug it in, lift, so even lift yourself off your leg a little bit, and then soften, keeping the pelvis strong as you elongate and relax. So you'll notice that the hips didn't skew if you did that, if your hips skewed in the first place. Okay, from here, inhale, release. We're not going to vinyasa, yay! Bring your arm, you can, your choice. This is more advanced. If you are quite far down and your shoulder's quite far in front of your leg, then try the take up there. Okay, if that's not going to float, take your arm, uh, take your leg. It doesn't have to be on your shoulder. It can just it actually even be by the elbow. Then root. If the front leg doesn't want to lift, that's okay. Oh yes, we did this last week. But you can add, you can do that or that. Now when you're ready, inhale, get your shoulder blades on your back and the, this ribs, Uddiyana Bandha up and lift. If you can, add the front leg. Two, and breathe. Three, four, five, and down. Change the legs. Okay, and breathe into your hip flexor. Root down, remember the foot's away from your thigh, and we're gonna hug in. So the hug in will bring your hips both onto the floor, but that's not ultimately what you want. You do allow yourself to lift off your left bum, but you don't want to lift off so much that it just splits open. Okay, so it's a happy medium. Press down through your left foot, reach through your left arm, lengthen, hug it in, wrap around, bind if possible, inhale, lift, exhale, slow down. Hold one, 
two, three, four, five. Inhale, lengthen out. Exhale, can sit. Either place your hand in front of the leg and lift up, or take the arm underneath your leg, leg on the upper arm, and hug elbows back, shoulder blades on your back. Inhale, lift and hold. One. You can cross them. It's a bit easier if you let, let this leg rest on the other leg. <laughs> Two. Oh, sorry. So am I counting a bit slow? Four. And five. Come down. Relax. No vinyasa. Take your right leg again. And twist in towards the leg. Take the left arm over. Now. This one, similar. Your right hip's going to be lifting up off the floor. But this one's quite interesting because if I push the right knee in, I can get a bit more of a bind. But once I've got more of a bind, because then I can actually get the bind maybe for some of you, you turn the palm facing up, you rotate it all the way around, and then you can hold your hands behind your back. Now, after you've done that, see if you can push your knee back equal straight neutral again and then look over your right shoulder flex the left foot push down thigh away three four deep breaths a bit of upper chest breathing with this intense twist look to the front and release vinyasa yay cross ankles or climb over your legs Place your hands, jump back, chaturanga, inhale, lift, exhale, downward facing dog. Step or jump to the hands and bend the left leg. Again, a little bit away from the thigh. Press down through the left foot, coming up, sitting right onto the right leg. Take the left arm, no, it's right arm, right arm, make a bit of space and then twist around. So if you don't need to move it in, maybe even don't. Keep it pressing up against your arm and then twist. Pushing your left knee to the left. Look over the left shoulder, breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Look to the front and release. Vinyasa. The whole thing can step all the way to go to Navasana position. So inhale, exhale to Durunga, inhale up dog, exhale down dog. Jump all the way through. So with bent legs, just land and straighten the legs quickly. Or with straight legs, they go directly up. And push big toes together. Check that your feet are perfect little hang ten feet. They're not like that, like that. Perfect little hang ten feet. And we're already on three, four, five. Cross ankles, place hands, shoulder blades back, lift your bum off the floor and your feet and sit it back down. That's a take up. Going to number two. Hold one. Push your thighs back. Two. Keep those big toes together burn the first time if you do that and then makes it great four five and a take up place your hands lift your bum and your feet off the floor and go back one last one normally we do five short in sequence we do three four keep stretching through the legs five and a full vinyasa going back take up cross go back step or jump Bend elbows, inhale, lift, exhale, down dog. And now, weight on down dog. Step or jump outside of your feet. Okay. So, some of you have been uh, getting this, so I'm not going to skip it because it's actually not that difficult. <laughs> That's what she said, yeah. And you can jump from here directly to Bhujya Pidasana. Okay, skip it. Let's quickly do Bhujya Pidasana and then I'll show you how to jump into Bhujya Pidasana. So your feet are quite wide. Get yourself down and your hands 
Now you don't have to be super supple. It's actually easier if you don't go too deep. Place your hands behind. So I've got my top of my arm next to my calf. And I can squeeze. So Bhujya Pidasana means Bhujya is shoulders. Pindasana means to squeeze. So I'm physically squeezing my shoulders in, placing them. Then come sit down on your upper arms and lift your legs up in the front. Yeah, sounds easy. Hey, just do that. Okay, once you've got that, you can keep pressing. The reason we fall on our bum is just because we haven't got the tummy lifted enough and counterbalancing. So you want to drop a little bit further forward. Okay, so keep playing, keep practicing. If you've got that, and you work towards the full pose in this scenario, is you're reaching your chin down to the floor. So one, two, three, four, five, and shift. Come back. For those who can, you shift from there or through to Divasana and you come to uh, Bakasana, crow pose. Okay, but otherwise, just come around. You can do a crow and jump back. Inhale up, exhale down dog. Okay, your back's already so rounded now. So, okay, to jump into that position, the beginning stages would be just to even try and jump. Now, I don't know if it's a secret or it's just something that I learned and that really helps. If you don't feel where the hands are, there's no way you're jumping onto the hands. So feel the hands. So I'm going to jump. Uh, don't even think high. Bring your hips down and put a ceiling. So you don't want the bum up, you want it down. Sit bones to the heels, down. Now, even in that position, you've got a much heavier feeling through the arms. Then in the beginning, you'll just jump to the fingertips on the outside. Okay, so you just do one jump, two jumps if you want to practice. Okay, so if you're happy with that, you would jump and then you can place and go into Bhujya Bhidasana. But you could, so you get a ceiling on your back, feel your hands, lift the belly, and you're ready to catch your weight on the tips of the fingers or on the whole of the palm. So I push down and I'm wrapping the legs around. That's why it's not very high, it's just above my elbow. It's not super high. Okay, just above the elbow. The secret is that ceiling that you put on your back that you go into it in a straight line. Don't think you have to be super supple and super anything. Okay. Okay, so that can be some homework. Just sit on your ass. And let's roly poly. Anybody who's happy with lotus, do your lotus pose. If you're not happy with lotus, cross your legs, put your elbows around your knees, and hold your ears. If you are in lotus, wrap the arms around, and if you can get it to your ears, eventually we'll thread it through the legs. But just there. Can we hold one, two? Three, four, five. Then take your hands to the top of your head and try and stay there. We're going to do five rolls to go around and meet us back in the front where we were. So we exhale, go down with your left. So you're going to go spin around clockwise. And two, roll back, roll up. Try and stay in a nice little ball. Three, four. And if you come back at the center, back six, uh, five, then we go to Kukutasana. Place your hands down on the floor next to your hips. Lift your bum. So if you're in lotus, so much easier. Then lift your bum. Lift and hold one, two, three, four, five. Place yourself down. Release. Gonna skip out the vinyasa, come lying down, exhale, legs straight. Ah, breathe. Inhale, grab, hold index and middle finger, grabs the right big toe. 
Left hand goes onto the left thigh as long as you can. Inhale, exhale, pull. Try and get your, your heart and your chin up to the leg. So initially it will maybe be forward, but keep lengthening. Two, three, and the bottom foot is pointed. Four, five. Inhale, let the hip go down. Exhale, take the leg, leave the left hip down as you take the right leg to the right. Turn your head to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, bring your leg back. Exhale, bring your head to your shin. Inhale, let your head go down. Exhale, release the arm. Inhale, hold the leg. Exhale, lower it down. Right hand on your right thigh. Inhale, grab the left big toes. Inhale, exhale. Coming right up as much as you can. Hold one. Stretch your right leg away. Hug it in. Always keep your core. Three, four, five. Inhalation, the head down. Exhalation, the leg to the left and the head to the right. One, two, keep stretching both legs away, but hug into the center, keeping it all together and then sending it out. Four, five. Inhale, bring the leg back. Exhale, head to the shin. Inhale, head back down. Exhale, release the arm. Inhale, exhale. Now the vinyasa is a chakrasana, it's a backward roll, backward somersault. And so some of you are practicing just to feel more secure in that. Practice to lift your hips. So you could place your hands, lift your hips. That's all I want you to do. Practice that. And for those who then can, you go right over, pull your feet to the back of the room. Bend the elbows, inhale, lift, exhale, down dog, and step or jump. Yeah. Now, often people say, but I can go over one shoulder. You can, but that's actually, I don't know, they use it in some flow, animal flows and stuff, and in the, but it's more dancing move than it is a yoga move, but it's actually a gymnastics back and roll. Yeah. So you want to practice to get the thighs pulling, pulling you right up. And we're gonna have a chance to practice again. Okay, next one. Roll back, take hold of your two big toes, and it's like Hamasana, and you breathe out there, holding your two big toes. On the inhalation, push your legs up and balance. Mm, I can't say on your coccyx, I can't say on your sit bones, just balance. And lift the chin, hold one. If you struggle to balance, just hold, and practice that without maybe grabbing and you'll feel that's not that difficult here. Three, four. Now we go to vinyasa from here, cross ankles, normal one. Inhale, lift, exhale, sending your legs back. Bend elbows, inhale, lift up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And last, there's two more poses, jump. Again, lie down, take a breath, lift legs up and over. Now, this one's going to end up finally into this Parangustasana position where you really fold it in to your legs. So, depending from person to person, again, bend knees, do the big toe one again if you want to, otherwise hold the outside of your feet. Finally, we'll hold the heels, but that makes it quite intense. So whatever you want to do, inhale, when you're ready, exhale, roll up, okay, once you go up and you are balancing, then change your hands to hold the heels, change your elbows to hold the back of your calves, and you pull and you look at your toes, otherwise you're just trying to balance for now, three, four, soften shoulders, five, now, this one's a fun one. You don't let go of your legs. You stay there and you take up and swing your legs through into your jump back. 
So I'm going to place my hand and my body weight will shift. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, jump back. So even if you just try and lift your bum off the floor there with your hands, bend elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Jump through. And we basically finish. So you can start breathing. It is after seven if anybody has to go. Okay, we cross. I want you to make Charlie Chapman legs. We're going to be pushing on the little toe side. No back bend in the upper body for now. So I've got two Charlie Chapman legs. Press on the little toes. Push the hips up. And the whole foot rotates. You can put the big toe down on the floor. So nice for the hips. Feel the glutes. Suck the tummy in. Stretch your arms. Three. Four. Five. Exhale, come down. Then go to normal bridge. Bring your feet to the hips. Feet parallel. Arms by your side and raise the hips. One. Two, three, and squeeze inwards and then rotate outwards with the bum. Four, and five, roll down. Good. Next one is a full bridge. If you want to keep repeating what we just did, go ahead. Um, and if you're quite, quite happy with the back bends, then we're going to do one long one, come down and rest. Then we're going to do three, and if you want to stay up, so then quickly demo before you up, up, or down. You're in the back bend, and you go, okay, I'm not going to come down, but I'm going to come on the head, take the hands further in if I can, and then lift back into the back bend. And you do that three times, making your hands come closer and closer to the feet. Okay, so your choice, but let's first try one, and let's stay for ten. Ten counts. Lift the tummy. Press on the feet, press on the hands, inhale, press down. Hold one, two, three, four. Keep pushing into the head of the feet. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Push the hips over the hip flexors. Four, <laughs> five, get down. down. <laughs> And lie down, completely relax for a moment. Breathe. And hopefully you're breathing in your back bend as well. Hey, that's what the counts are for, to remind you to breathe. The next ones, also forgot to remind you that when you're going up in a back bend, don't think, oh my God, here comes a back bend, and you start arching. You want your bundles, you want your lat, your lat in this position is shorter. Your lat in this push down position is longer. So before you go, I used to say to the students, breathe out and push down. That's like really crazy bundles. But all you have to do is find your bundles. Okay, find the three bundles, and then you'll feel your body's going down like a ship, pushing down a little bit. And then when you're ready, feet and hands and on your inhalation, you push and lift. Hold one, stretch your arms, two, three, because that will relax the back the best and will open up the lap. Four, five. So you can walk in now or you can drop your hands in, walk the hands or come down all the way and we go back up again. And hold one, two, three, four, down, walk your hands closer to the last one and press up one, two, three, four, five. Slowly come down, unless you do a lift to standing and take a moment. You might want to hug the legs into the chest. Well done. Then it's another chakrasana. Roll back or just practice. Even that's a very nice stretch for your back after that. So otherwise, your back would roll. Chakrasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And come to seated. 
straighten the legs, lift the belly and relax into your forward fold to stretch out your back. Breathe. And we hold up to 10, five, six, seven, eight. Also feel again what happens if you do activate the sides of your bum. Four, oh yeah, it's going to be like nine. <laughs> Ten. Inhale, extend, exhale, and still very lifted in the tummy and release. We go into shoulder stand, come lie down, flat on your back, and we do everything to the count of eight. Lift the legs up, elbows nice and close, support, and check that you're not on your neck and you're resting your shoulder blades. Stretch, don't force it into your neck. Okay? Two, where are we? Three, Four, five, breathing slower now, six, seven, eight, there we go. Exhale your legs down into Halasana, lift the tummy, take the legs over, interlock your hands, pull them down to the other side of the room, little fingers pressing down. Reach the top of your feet if you can onto the floor. Thighs up. Breathe. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Into Halata Karma Pidasana, your ear pressure pose. With the knees next to your ears or knees on the forehead for a variation and hug in. Pull the arms down and away. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Straighten the legs, support the back, and come back to shoulder stand. Now you have to follow my voice, because you probably can't see me. Bend the knees, and if you can, go into lotus pose. If not, go into a cross-legged, like you're sitting in the air. Drop the knees horizontal to the floor, and place your hands onto your thighs, knees. Lift the tummy and see if you can balance. Press your legs up and away. And hold. So it's a nice play of balance there. That's what generally in the beginning your elbows will be bent. Because as you straighten the, the elbows out, the body has to get a different alignment. Three, four, and five. Drop your shins over to your face and take your hands around your legs. Bind there. So you've got the lotus that's perfect. You bind your hands on the other side and we hold. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly come down. If you're in lotus, come down in your lotus pose. And then you'll be, for those of iron lotus, into the fish, you'll grab on your feet once you're in the fish. Otherwise, straight legs. So you press on your elbows, arch up into the fish. And then if you're eyeing lotus, hold the feet, pull the elbows up, open the chest. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to skip out to Uttana Padasana. Gently lay your push your elbows to lay your body back down on the floor. For those who want to, Chakrasana, otherwise a normal vinyasa would suffice. Legs up and over, pushing your hands, rolling back into plank. Bend elbows, inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. And then knees on the floor for headstand. 
So you're at home, nobody can fight with you, you can go towards a wall. Okay. Um, it can be held up to 25 counts, which is quite rough. Again, I'm going to use that same shoulder blade back, chest back, ribs down and tummy in. And that's formation against my head. So strong, strong upper shoulder space. So to feel that, you draw your shoulder blades back, you lift your armpits, put the head into your hands and snuggle it in and push your head into the hands, pull your hands into the head. Feel the whole forearm pressing into the earth and then walk up. Once you're ready, you push down with your arms and your legs will start lifting. So maybe single leg, maybe double leg and broaden shoulders, broaden back, hold one, two, if you can't hold, you just come down, three, four, so if you can hold up to ten, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now don't just rush to come down, we're going to do another variation of 90 degree angles. So lower your legs down to a 90 degree and see if you can hold it there. So the hips will shift a little bit over to counterbalance. Oops, didn't hold there. <laughs> and if you got it at 90 degrees, then stay there for five, two, so I'm going to quickly show you, four, five. Once you're in the headstand, you hold for your counts, and you come down, try and get up into a 90, you stretch out, and you hold that for five, and then you come back up. And then we try not to plonk down, we lift. So you go through that 90 position, you'll feel the arms really take the weight, and then you're hovering down. And then finally, pose of the child. When you're done, you slowly, slowly control it down. Pose of the child, breathe and rest. Last vinyasa, place your hands down in front of you, you can step or jump now to your plank, bend elbows, chaturanga, inhale, upper facing dog, Bhutva Mukha Svanasana, to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, and then jump to seated. In the seated position, you can be in lotus, or just easy seated, lotus is not going for you at the moment. Bind your hands behind your back. If you've got lotus, you will be planning to try and get grip the foot on either side. Okay. Take a deep breath. Now, if this hurts the knees in any way, put more support on your hands or maybe even on your forehead. Okay. So hug the tummy, then extend forward and down. Hold one, two. Try and feel how your base is still rooting to the floor. Three. and five. Inhale, that's when you can always in your own time hold longer, come back and sit in Yan Mudra, Chin Mudra. Shoulders relax, you lift the three bandhas, chin to chest, shoulders relax down and on your back and we breathe the dry breath through the three bandhas. One, Two, three, four, five, six. Release 
release the head. But you're still going to be hugging in. So really, your stomach should burn on this one. So if you've got lotus, great. Enjoy the lotus because it's easier. Otherwise, you may want to have the feet on the floor. Shoulders relax and you bring them back. And you suck your tummy. So really concave it in. Suck and get your knees as close to your, well, if you have no lotus. But otherwise, lotus as well. You hug it in and you press it away. And when you're ready, let's go for 10 counts. Lift your butt off the floor for one, two, Smiling. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't put down on ten. Ten and lower. Good. Let's do one more vinyasa just to get the body moving. Step or jump, whatever you like to do. Bend elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And jump to stand. Sorry, are you sitting already? If you are sitting, don't worry. <laughs> Inhale, come stand or sit. And exhale. We'll just finish with three arms. <sighs> Inhale deeply. stuff to lie down you can do otherwise go directly in inhale exhale inhale lift exhale jump back bend inhale Adho Mukha Svanasana exhale oops Adho Mukha Svanasana and jump to lie down Whew. relax your arms a little way flop your feet shoulder blades underneath you Oh, take rest. Close your eyes and breathe. And stay with your body, feel the body, let it relax. And just be in the space feeling. I promise you it might have, well done for coming to class, might have been a difficult space sometimes to get you to class, but hopefully the how good your body feels afterwards and how good you feel for doing it brings you back again. So completely let your body drop. The breath slows down. And your breath feeds the body, nourishes the body. your body go heavy and relaxed even your jaya breathing has subsided you might notice the sensations in your body dancing and tingles of warmth energized energy 
healing energy moving through you. Even for the last minutes, deep in your experience of being right here, right now. No where else to go, nothing to do. Completely drop. If you do like to stay, then of course you're most welcome to. I'll just end the meeting. But if you now like to start coming back, you can softly caress your fingers, roll over onto your side and relax. Take a moment before rushing up. The rest of your evening. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hope you feel so awesome after. Thank you everybody. Namaste.